Yo, what's up everybody? Uh, Independence Day 2021. And for those who don't know, I've been kind of working on the Are You Serious movie and I get got to some of the last scenes, I'm, you know, kind of editing it slightly out of order. And I got to the point where one of the characters repents of their sins and they kind of tell their whole, all their dark secrets. And that's how they get free. That's how they get their independence. And as I was working on the movie, the Lord pressed it on my heart that I needed to do the same thing. See, a lot of times we want to celebrate people and their success, but we never understand their failures. We want to celebrate and, you know, hoorah, you know, you did this wonderful thing, but what about all the mistakes that we made? Those are the things we don't want to talk about. And so uh, this is my night to get free. Some of you may know that I got married back in 2010 to what I would call my covenant spouse. When I met her, you know, I remember hearing the Lord say, that's your wife. Y'all, I was like, nope, couldn't be, nah. And I said, I fleeced God for about a year. Fleeced him. And, and if y'all don't know what fleecing is, that just means you ask God to confirm his word. And every confirmation, everything, everything, even stuff that he would speak to me, and it would happen six months later, a year later. I couldn't deny that was who he called me to be with. And so needless to say, we got married. You know, what people don't know was before that I was married and it was a flesh thing, you know. And so when I got married to my covenant spouse, the one who God said, that's your wife. In less than two years, I jacked that up, screwed it up, just totally messed it up because of my hurt and my pain and my undealt with fears and my undealt with issues. Um, I pretty much told her I'm done, walked away, that's, that's it. And uh, for the next couple of years, I, I'll never forget, man. I, I broke down. It was like a part of me left. And to those who've known me for some years, they used to say I was a robot because I didn't have emotion. And that was true. You know, when you've been sexually abused as a kid, you learn not to show emotion. You learn not to show pain. You just want to protect yourself. You don't want anybody else to hurt you. And that was me. But the problem was this was the person I was supposed to be willing to die for. But instead, I was too busy trying to protect my own life. And so for the next couple years, I literally just wanted to hang out with God. Just, you know, ask God, okay, what happened? Why did this happen? And he began to minister to me like so many things about marriage, about people who've been abused and about the effects of the abuse. Because see, I'm going to say this, y'all. It's one thing to know that somebody's been abused. It's a whole nother thing to understand how it affects that person, you know? And it's one thing, like I said, it, okay, yeah, they were abused, all right, but how was it affecting them now? I didn't even understand how it was affecting me. I thought after I went through my classes, yo, I was good. And it wasn't until I got into that situation where certain words were said or certain things was done, bam, no, uh-uh, ain't going out like this. Ain't gonna talk to me like this. You know what? I'm done. Forget this. I refuse to go through the same thing again. But it wasn't the same thing. So I walked away. I found, you know, y'all know me. I love the Bible. And I went through and studied and found ways to justify it. And some of y'all judging, but you know what? You do the same thing. And that, it was a sin. I heard God tell me not to, but my pain was screaming so loud 
That's what I obeyed. It was do whatever to protect yourself. And God was saying, give your life for your wife. And so I just like, now I'm done. And like I said, I, I suffered something I've never experienced in my entire life. I felt internal and external pain that was almost unbearable. It was like two weeks. I cried every day, mostly all day. And I just I started asking God for help because I didn't know how to deal with it. And I didn't understand what the pain is of losing someone that's close to you or losing a part of you. And so years later, but let me let me stop. I went through a period where I fell into some sin, just did stupid stuff because I was trying to cope with the pain of what happened. And it wasn't like the pain of being sexually abused because that's an abuse. That's a trauma that you did not. It's not your fault with that. You didn't cause that. What I was dealing with was a trauma that I caused myself. And if a lot of us are real, it's some trauma that we cause ourselves. And then we want to ask everybody for help and, and try to justify it. And there was no justification. So after a little while, I waited a period of time. and I really felt that I was supposed to go and try to find my wife and apologize and make things right. But pride, I was like, it's been several years. I don't know where she's at. Don't worry about it, I'm done. And so I went on, y'all, and I remarried. And the reason I'm putting this out there publicly, because publicly I got remarried, and that was sin. Just being real with y'all. See, it's one thing if you had your Ishmael, and then you get your Isaac. Ishmael, even God told Ishmael, get up out of there. You got to go. But your Isaac is a whole different thing. And so when you're with that covenant partner, you can't just file for divorce. You know, as I studied the scriptures over and over and over and I saw the hardness of heart. And I'm like, but God, that wasn't me. Not me. Not your boy. Yeah, that was me. That was me. And so the short story is I met another young lady. This was years later. We talked. And the truth is, she reminded me of my wife. There were certain things about her that reminded me of my wife. And that's what I married was the memory of the woman that I had, but she wasn't her. And I'll never forget, y'all, this was so crazy. Because even though I'm telling y'all now, I remember that, but back then I didn't think about it. It was just like, it's something about her. And I remember when I met her, I thought she was wearing a red dress. But then when I saw the video, because the event was video where we met at, she was in blue. And I was like, well, that's strange. But I know I saw red. I even told people. There's a video that was out there before I deleted it that talked about when I met her, and I just knew she was wearing red. I, so I didn't really understand it. I just, whatever. And I remember saying to God, who is she? I didn't get an answer. And I asked God, is that my wife? No answer. So then I started praying for signs. Because it's got to be something. Because I feel a connection. And then all of a sudden the signs came. All these signs. That one sign after the next. And I said, okay, well maybe this is, maybe it's got to be it, you know. And all the time, I'm having dreams saying no. But I'm ignoring them right now. You know how we do when we want to do something and God is telling us no? We ignore the dreams. All before, the dreams were a part of the signs when God told me about my wife and he said, that's your wife. He would give me a dream. He would confirm the dream. And then there would be like me asking God very specific things and he would confirm those things. And so he confirmed his word. In this case, there was no word but there were signs. And so we fast forward, we in the same house and I'm constantly feeling like this is cursed. 
And I'm like, what is going on here? God, why do I feel like this relationship is cursed? People will sometimes ask me what's wrong. Well, no, everything's good, good. But that inward feeling like this is cursed. And I don't know why. I think we did everything right. We, we asked the parents. We, we talked to the pastors. We got counseling. But why do I feel like this is cursed? And I begin to say, God, why do I feel like this? What is this? And I remember then feeling like you're in adultery. And I'm like, that don't make no sense. How can I be in adultery when we got a marriage license? We got all this stuff. We did everything. We even got married in the church. And I kept feeling like you're in adultery. And I'm like, that don't make any sense. That don't make any sense. And so I suppressed it. And I know for some of y'all who try tripping, yeah, you've done the same thing. You know, there's a lot of people who are in marriages and you know that God didn't co-sign on that. And yet, you know it's cursed, but you stay in it. And I'm going to be real with y'all. I was going to stay in it. And I didn't understand the why. And then all of a sudden, stuff just, boom, it was over. And there was a release. And I'm like, why do I feel better now? Why do I feel freer now? Why do I not feel the same thing I've been feeling for the last year? Because I wasn't in adultery anymore. But see, in my mind, because me and the young lady was legally married, couldn't have been adultery. So recently I'm back studying my Bible, which I never stopped studying it, but the worship time, now that there's nobody here, I'm just worshiping, just spending time with God regularly. And God begins to speak. And there was a dream I had back in 2016, 2017. And in the dream, I saw my wife, the one who I married in 2010, my covenant spouse, in this church. And I went to the pastor and I said, I want my family back. I want my wife back. And on March 21st of this year, I didn't physically see her in a church. Somehow a picture that I thought I had deleted eight years ago was still on my computer. I hadn't seen it in eight years. And all of a sudden, I see the picture of her at the church. And I go to the pastor that Sunday, the 21st of March. And I said, sir, I need to talk to you. I said, I want my family back. And I know this makes no sense because I have remarried and, and done all these things, but I don't feel connected to that person. I still feel connected to somebody from back then. And I, for the next couple days, I'm like, God, I feel like I'm losing my mind. I just totally, this don't make sense to me. And the Lord says, look at what I told you. So I pull up my journal of dreams. And that's when I realized that I dreamed about it three and a half, four years ago. And so I wrote down that date and said, wow, this happened. And as I started going through my dream journal, because most of the time I would dream, get up, write it down and go back to sleep and never go back to it. I realized God was telling me the whole time that other relationship was going to fail because that's not your covenant spouse. There was one specific dream I saw two days ago, y'all, on July 2nd. I couldn't sleep that night and I'm like, what's, what's going on, God? Pick up your dream book. And in that dream book, it talked about me marrying this other young lady by her name. And an investigator or someone of authority comes to me and says, you're already married to your wife. And in the dream, I said, no, I'm not. That doesn't make sense because that ended years ago. And he said, basically, I wasn't free to be married. And I'm like, but I read this on July 2nd. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. 
But it was also early that day on July 2nd, I was telling somebody that God is spirit. And a lot of times when we read the Bible, we read it from a natural understanding and not a spiritual understanding. And so now here it is. This spiritual understanding hits me. In the natural, according to man, you was remarried. But in God's eyes, that's still your wife. And you was not free to remarry. And then all of a sudden, the memory of all of those feelings of, is this thing cursed? Why do I feel like I'm an adultery when I'm married to this lady? All of that starts to come back to me. And I'm like, wow. This has been going on for months. Just different things being uncovered, uncovered. And so tonight as I'm working on the film, just as the actress was repenting of her sins, God said, you got to repent. And I'm like, well, God, I've already asked you for forgiveness. You know, I don't know where my wife is. I haven't talked to her in seven and a half or eight years. So I don't even know how to ask her for repentance. And then he told me, but you need to repent to the people. Because like you publicly got remarried, you need to publicly repent. You need to publicly admit what you did was wrong. So I sit here asking y'all to forgive me. Because as a man of God, let me tell you something. God calls all of us to repent from sins. He calls all of us to live according to his laws. And I'm going to tell y'all up front, there are a lot of, there's some of his laws I just don't like. But I still got to obey him. I can tell you this. If you have been with your covenant spouse, and I'm when I say covenant spouse, please understand what I'm saying. There are things that we do in the flesh, and God don't co-sign on that. If you want a biblical example, look in the book of Genesis, where Abraham slept with Hagar and produced a son called Ishmael. But God said, no, that is not the child of promise. And he, I believe it's Hebrews chapter nine. It goes through and it lists out that Ishmael, even though he was Abraham's child, he was not the child of promise. He was his first son. Isaac was his second son. And so Ishmael was a result of doing things in the flesh. Isaac was a result of doing things spiritually because you will find that the Lord came to Abraham and Sarah, which was his wife, his covenant wife. And he said, about this time next year, I will visit you and you will have a son. That son was Isaac. So it, it, if, if you just study that, if you want to really go even deeper, Adam which we know in the book of Genesis and Jesus, Jesus was considered the second Adam. Adam did some flesh stuff. Jesus was spirit. Even though he walked on this earth in the flesh, his father was spirit. And he obeyed God all the days of his life. And so for those who say, well, you know, you did this. Yeah, I did a lot of things before. Just like a lot of us done things before we got saved. But now that you've got saved, you come into the knowledge of Christ if you mess up, you need to repent and you need to ask God, what do I do? How do I, you know, get free from this? And for me, he told me, Chris, you need to repent. You need to publicly ask me for forgiveness, which I've already asked God for forgiveness and to ask the people and even my wife. I don't know where she is. As I said, I haven't talked to her in almost, almost eight years. But if, she's, if she happens to see this or some of y'all know her and forwarded this to her, just tell her I'm asking her for forgiveness because I was wrong. And yo, to the young lady who I remarried, I, you know, hey, I'm asking you to forgive me too because I made stuff, I made a mistake. And I truly believe that you are free to do, more, do whatever. Just please obey God in whatever you do. That's on me. I have to take that. 
And you know, as a man, I'm going to tell y'all, men, we like wrestle with pride and all of that stuff. Forget all that. I would rather, rather obey God and be humble and make it to see him and spend eternity with him than to look good before y'all and end up in hell. I don't want to be separated from God. I remember the times when I fell into sin and his spirit lifted. I don't want to be without him. I don't. So I'm saying that to, so you understand God is spirit. And no matter what man's law says, man's law says you can get married 500 times or whatever they say. But God says you have a covenant spouse. And as long as that covenant spouse is living, you're bound to them. That's 1 Corinthians chapter, I believe it's 7. Matthew, in the book of Matthews, it's all through the scripture. And it's amazing how, I ain't gonna tell y'all no lie, I was like, well, God divorced Israel. Read on a little bit further. He didn't kill all them jokers off. He said, because of my namesake, he brought them back. And i never forget this, y'all. After I had filed for divorce and me and her was done, and I was like, I went through that breaking period, and I asked God, I said, God, what happened? His words to me were very simple. You didn't love her. And I gave God, I said, no, God, I loved her. I gave, I gave him my whole, my resume. Well, God, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did all of this. I, I did everything to prove I loved her. And he said, you didn't love her. And I said, okay, God. Show me an example of love. The Lord took me to the night where I lost my mind and almost killed my own two-year-old son. And if my son is watching this, so I'm going to ask you to forgive me. That, that particular night, police will call. I came to the officer and I told him, sir, take me to jail. I deserve to go. I was wrong. And I will never forget what that officer said to me that night. He said, because you told me the truth, just leave for the night. And so God showed me that night as an example of him loving me. He showed me his grace, his undeserved favor because I should have went to jail. I should have. And so he allowed me to be free because of his love. And so as he began to minister to me out of the book of Isaiah the last couple nights, and he showed me how Jesus took on our sin. It was because of our re rebellion. It was because of our sins, because of our iniquities he hung on the cross. He said, that's how you love your wife. And I was like, wow, you're still teaching me about this. All these years, God, but I've asked you to forgive me, but I still haven't learned. So it was not just about me asking him it's about because I publicly made a mistake. I need to publicly repent. And I need to publicly understand what love is. Something God said around that time when he gave me that example. He said, love is shown at the hard times, not just when it's easy. It's really easy for us to say we love somebody when they're doing wonderful things for us and nice things for us. But what happened when they're persecuting us? when they're hurting us, can we still love them? I could tell y'all I want to say I wish I could. Back then, I said I, would, I wished I could, I just didn't. Or maybe I, I just didn't understand. Now I finally got to that place. I'm so much better now than I was. Even to come to y'all and say this, because this is going all over Facebook, all over the world. And I'm going to tell you, Chris Davios, because it used to be Davis. And I know when God told me, I'm changing your name because I'm changing your nature. I'm like, okay, good. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. 
I didn't understand it. That's a breaking. That is a breaking because to publicly put this out here, y'all can think what you want about me as long as God says, well done, that good and faithful servant. And to my wife, who we married on April 20th, 2010. We had our first kiss April 20th, 2010. If you happen to see this, I'm asking you to forgive me because I was wrong. I was wrong for remarrying to the young lady who I remarried. I want to ask her to forgive me because I never, ever should have even talked to you because in God's eyes, I was still legally married. And so I'm asking all of y'all to forgive me. And to those who do know about the Are You Serious movie, Oh, a lot of those lessons, a lot of those lessons in that movie came from the situation with me and my wife because I learned on the other side of it. And yo, if you have been sexually abused or you've been in an abusive relationship, abusive marriage, get help. I had to go talk to a counselor. I've talked to counselors many a times and it's helped me. But the most important counselor I went to was Jesus because he began to show me the root of things. And it's one thing I never forget. My wife used to always ask me why. Well, why do you feel this way? Why do you think like this? And those were the things that prompted me to think, you know what? Why do I hate? Why did I dislike Christmas? Why did I dislike certain people? Why didn't I want anybody looking at me? It was because of the shame. It was because of what happened. It was controlling me, but I didn't even know it. And her whys, even when she was no longer in my life, that carried forward. And I said, God, why did I marry Jen? Because you didn't love her, is what he said. I wasn't man enough to love her at that moment. So to all the men, I'm telling you what I know, been there, done that. We get hard hearted or we let our past control us. You know, people talk about baggage. She brought in some baggage. Yeah, she had a little small bag. I had two big duffel bags. I looked like I was going to war. I had so much baggage in my life and I brought that into our marriage. And so any least little thing she did, I was so critical of her. And then any mistake she made, I magnified it. And the whole time, God is like, you want to be forgiven? You forgive her. I realize it now. I don't know how to... And you know, I, I just say I wish I could turn back time, but... I realize that probably the lessons I've learned, I wouldn't have known them if that never happened. So truly God takes all things and he makes it work together for the good of those who love him. And y'all, I love him. And I know he loves me. And to my wife, I still love you, baby. I will never forget you. And I pray every day God restores our marriage. To the young lady, that I messed up, that Chris messed up and married, I pray that God blesses you with your covenant husband and you're able to move forward and y'all have children and y'all be happy. Please forgive me. But to my wife, baby, I love you. I always will. To the people, those who know me as a minister, those who know me as a writer, as an actor, forgive me because I, made, I was a bad example. God is spirit, and anything he does is in spirit and in truth. So no matter what man's law says, it's what God's law says. That's what you hold on to, and that's what you follow. So I say this to everybody, please forgive me. I love all of y'all. To my wife, I love you, baby. And I say to everybody, peace. One last thing, you know, some of y'all may have noticed this ring and the fact that I'm still wearing this ring. 
This ring symbolizes fighting for marriage because that's the one thing I would not do back then. And y'all, I, I want to tell you when I got remarried and I was in a sinful relationship, it's amazing I was fighting for it. And I'm like, God, why was I fighting for that? He said, you were fighting for that because you didn't fight for this. So basically I was fighting for an adulterous marriage when I should have been fighting for my covenant marriage. But because I didn't fight back then, here I am fighting for something now that I knew in my spirit wasn't right. I couldn't just, I just couldn't explain it. So y'all, when you see this band, I keep it on because my wife and I, we, we got married in camouflage. Those who came to the wedding, you'll probably remember it. It was a, it was a very interesting wedding. And, I will never forget her. She she was she was my rib. She she still is my rib because we're both still alive. And I don't know, like I said, y'all, I don't know where she's at, but I know one thing for sure. You fight for the covenant marriage God gave you. Because if God joins two people together, don't let anyone put us under, even yourselves. <laughs> It's funny, she and I used to always say that, and it was us who put us, it was me who put us under. So I pray daily, God restore it. But I thank you for teaching me how to fight for marriage. And this ring is a never ending circle. That fight, I have to fight it daily, like I fight the fight of faith. So right now my fight is in prayer. And to all the other men out there, if you have that covenant spouse, the one who God says is your wife, do everything you can to make your marriage work. And it's going to mean you got to die to yourself. You got to die to your pride. You got to die to your flesh. You have to die to a lot of things to make your marriage work. But it's well worth it. You hang in there. Because living without your spouse, that's a rough feeling. God bless y'all. Peace.